Okay. Um, commandment number eight is protection of property. Israelites who were once slaves in Egypt and, were in, and are now in the promised land. While in slavery, the Israelites owned nothing. Now that they have been brought and have acquired the property, it's God's grace. And so God is concerned to have that property also protected. So it's protection of property which has been acquired by people who owned nothing because they had been slaves. Then commandment number nine is protection of justice. God who created people has protected their families, property, and others is now concerned with the general welfare by being governed properly. The God of justice demands his people to be ruled with justice. They were not to tell or aid others to tell lies. They are not to give false testimony. They are not to accept false testimony or suffocate the truth. So justice is very important and a concern for God. And lastly, it's a protection from evil desire. All the Ten Commandments are for, for the hard truth that the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. So the Ten Commandment is in the form of desire for wealth, desire for power, desire for pleasure. You know. So this is intended to protect a man from evil desires that make his heart restless. So man is half contentment. Um, administering the law. Mostly, a law was administered in families or villages by elders, but uh, judges, that is circuit judges, priests and prophets settled the more complex ones. Later on, we find kings also were involved in judging or settling cases. Uh, in settling cases. Violation of the Ten Commandments carried a death sentence that is in the maximum case. Other crimes like secret sins led to being cut off from the covenant God. And then uh, we find a subdirection for accidental murders. If you murder somebody accidentally, why well, you should learn it too so that your life is protected. Now, making a holy nation. All people and things are reckoned as holy or unclean. So, people and their things or property, they are either holy or unclean. That is, they belong to the kingdom of God or to the big kingdom or to the kingdom of death. And sin is the power that pulls things from the realm of God to the realm of death. In other words, if something is holy, what pulls it from being holy? Is it sin? Or what puts something from the kingdom of God to the kingdom of death is sin. And then there's a provision of sacrifice. This is the means God gives to move things from the realm of death to God. In other words, if somebody has moved from holiness to uncleanness, what brings him back is the sacrifice. So that's what is put in place to help people because God knew very well that people will always sin. And so they have to be brought back. Okay. Holiness extended to other things also. Holiness was not only to human beings, but it went even to food. There are lawful foods, which are called kosher, and the unholy foods. These were in domestic, not as domestic animals, the animals which were holy and good for eating. Those are animals with hoofs, and uh, they chew the cud. Then we have in the sea, we have animals like fish, which would have fins and scales. And then flying animals, those which hop and fly is happy for us. So those are the holy foods. And then we have another kind of uncleanness, which would be common people, that is leprosy. If you have skin elements, that is outside in flaking and scrubbing as diagonized by the priests. So leprosy, you could not um, uh, claim to be holy when you have leprosy. You need to be cleaned from that. And then another one was in sexuality, <coughs> sexual purity. Sexual intercourse, uh, that is between man and woman, 
was strictly for man and woman, those who are married. And sex is prohibited from the following. One is same sex. In other words, people of the same sex who do not have sexual intercourse because that is confusion of genders. Man cannot have it with a man, man, woman cannot have it with a woman, but it must be that opposite sex. Then sex also was prohibited from relatives because this was mixing up of blood. Mother and child, or father and daughter, or brother and sister, that was prohibited. Then also, another kind of sex prohibited is with women who are in periods because uh, this is mixing life and death, a semen is life and blood is death. Then another kind is having sex with animals. That is mixing of species. You know? And then another one would be not have sex with statues or having sex with vegetation. You have had some people who can say to have sex with uh, either a watermelon or a banana stem or something like that. All that kind of sex is prohibited. Then you have a kingdom of priests, lots of God's sanctuary. God's sanctuary is called the tabernacle. So where God's people meet together to worship him and being served by a priest. The tabernacle is divided into a couple of sections. There was one section called the Hollow of Holies. This is a section where the stones, uh, the tablet stones were kept and is only accepted by the high priest once a year to atone for people's sins, which was done also once a year. Then the, section, sex, the second section of it was the holy place where male Jews would worship from. The, to, this was mainly for the male Jews. If you are not a male Jew, you would not. And then you have the outer court, that is where women, eh, women, who, the Jews, women, and uh, non-Jews, that is, people who are converted to to Judaism would worship from and find a sacrifice is also done around this area. I've come up with a picture which can give you sort of um, an eye bad view of what I'm talking about. There's a whole of holies where you can see the same, that kind of stuff. And the outer, you can see people sacrificing from outside here. That is where even women are found. Okay, this would in Israel. God gave guidance on how priesthood should also be practiced. And uh, I'll put a picture here of how a high priest would be dressed. And that is according to instructions uh, per Exodus chapter 28. Priesthood was hereditary. You don't just come uh, and become a, 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 a priest. You, it was hereditary. In addition, priests were required to be holy, both as physical normality and moral character. What do I mean here? A priest will not be somebody who is crippled, or you are missing a finger, or you miss an ear, or even a toe. You had to have whole, to be whole, the whole of you have all the parts on you, but also a moral character to, to be able to serve God. Now the duties of a priest were one as a counselor, counselor that is investigated cases of purity and sought God's will, and then another duty was to work as a teacher, to interpret the law for the people. So people would always come to inquire and ask for explanation or teach. And also, finally, to be a minister of the altar, overseeing the sacrifices and all that kind of stuff. And then, what are the types of sacrifices? The types of sacrifices we have the whole burnt offerings, which is recorded in Lev Leviticus chapter 1 and 2. We have the peace offerings, which is recorded in Leviticus 3, and then the sin offering in Leviticus 4, and the guilt offering. Of course, when we talk of the whole burnt offering, that's where people brought animals for to be burnt, offered. Then there's a peace offering where people, there's no problem, but they just want to do what to offer. And then sin offering, that's where somebody has committed sin and he wants to be made holy again, to belong to God's kingdom. And then the guilt, this is where somebody is guilty. You may have seen it or not. And for worker books, you can find this one on page 40. And then, um, the day of atonement. Jesus Christ, the atoning sacrifice. A sin 
is an objective power that infects individual and the community. And so, what could be done to clean people from sins was sacrifice. And sacrifices, the sins would be some of the sins could could be known that have committed sin, but others you would see without knowing. So, so sacrifices could atone for specific sins, but there was an annual day of atonement which was put there to cleanse the whole community. And this was done by the holy by the high priest, who would go to the Hall of Holies to atone for everybody, including himself. In the New Testament, similarly, we find that Jesus was given by God to atone for all sins and forever with his righteous blood on the cross at Calvary. And we shall remember this in the Holy Eucharist. So, thank you very much. This is the end of our, our lecture. May God bless you.